Is this working? Oh shit, it's chat on. There we go. Hello. Uh, welcome to stream. Um, I have not streamed anything that isn't a. Hold on, I'll even my mic a bit closer. I have not streamed anything that isn't um <clears throat> a, a podcast in um I want to say like four months now. Um, my reasoning for that is uh yeah, Bubba Duck. Uh, real life happened, pretty much. Um, I had to get a job. Because, you know, streaming just wasn't a viable job option, so I've been back to work. And I just, I didn't have the time to, because I, I actually, I was doing a lot. Um, I had the job, I had the podcast, I had college, I, I do art too. And I have Joy-Con Drift, as you can tell, so this is going to be fun. Um, <laughs> I just had a lot going on in the real world, and I had no time to stream, or uh, energy for that matter either. I was working on a video too. I wanted to make more videos, but who knows what's gonna happen with that anymore? Cause I'm just I'm just so busy. But I figured, um, I Pikmin three was always something I would said the second this came to Switch, I wanted to stream it. I just stopped streaming by the time uh, it came out. Uh, same with Luigi's Mansion three. I I fully intended, pretty much, up until like. I stopped streaming to stream this in October. This was supposed to be like my October stream. Because I love this game. But I, you know, real life happened again. So I, I just couldn't. So yeah, I, I feel kind of bad. Because I, I stopped streaming, I feel like. um, Right when I kind of had an audience starting to build up. And I kind of just left. Cause my Paper Mario streams were like averaging high 20s, 30s. Which is like pretty high for like a nobody on Twitch like me. And now, now it's starting to get somewhere, and then I, I, I feel like I've lost most of that audience now. But it's fine. Uh, I just want to play Pikmin. With Joy-Con Drift. The unfortunate thing, I have a controller that doesn't have Joy-Con Drift, but my preferred way of playing this game is with Pointer. <laughs> if push comes to shove, I'll just grab a controller, but I want to, I, I played like two playthroughs this game already with Joy-Con Drift. So I can probably live. Just a heads up, this is... <laughs> This is my fourth playthrough of this game, already, since this version has come out. If the audio is too low or anything, feel free to tell me, I can, I can fix it. Big Nintendo fixed Joy Con. Yeah, I need to send mine in. Yeah, here's my three playthroughs. Uh, this was my first one. I did Ultra Spicy first, because I wanted to, you know, that was like the big new thing. And then I did a regular playthrough. Hard is the normal mode, pretty much. Like, the difficulty options are technically true. And this is my fastest time. I... Day 17. This is a Wii U stream. Day 17 is the fastest I've done. Like, I, I just... I want to show off this real fast. To prove. To prove. I'm going to embarrass myself, I'm sure, in this stream. I'm gonna embarrass myself so bad in this- I want to prove real fast that I am good at this game. I can beat this game in 17 days. But yeah. Uh, I'll race this one. But yeah, uh, Normal is actually the easy mode. These options aren't entirely true. Uh, Normal's the easy mode. Hard is like what regular Pikmin 3 was. And then Ultra Spice is the new one. Uh, this is just gonna be a casual playthrough, so uh, I'm just gonna do like the normal mode. If people like this, maybe I'll come back and do Lucky ultra spicy another time. Twenty XX. At the far reaches of space lies a planet on the brink of ruin. The planet's name, Kopai. Due to a booming population, booming appetites, and a basic lack of planning. Kopai's inhabitants have all been I, I'd say seven for this. Supply. Their only hope is to find another planet with edible matter. Accordingly, they send unmanned scout vessels called sparrows out into space. So this is the probably the Pikmin game with the most plot to it. The other two are very Pikmin light on plot. This one has a bit more of a story to it, which is Fruitless. neat. Just as they're about to give up. 
final vessel reports back with news of a miraculous discovery. They mobilized to investigate the planet, which they named PNF-404. This is actually the, the first time um, the Pikmin planet has been given a name. This is good. This is pretty Because uh, before this, it was just called, like, Unknown Planet. What is... What does Brawl call it? I think Distant Planet was its first name, given in Brawl. At last, the and then here it was, um... light-year voyage nears its end. But, as the... Sorry my commentary sucks. I, this is my first time in a long time. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be that funny. <laughs> horribly wrong. It was slightly... Okay. Uh, okay, let me... I was worried that I turned the game up too low. I, I had a problem in the past making the game too low. I just want to make sure. Uh, yeah, if the audio's weird or anything, people will tell me. Ugh. What happened? <laughs> There he is, Reggie Fizame. Where am I? The last thing I remember was. Oh, of course. This must be PNF 404. This Charlie's Wii U gamepad. <laughs> Charlie the ship. Charlie the ship. Do you copy? This is your captain. I repeat, do you copy? Hello? Nah. Anyone? So far. There's no response. Where's my ship? My crew? Hmm. Sounds like John Cave explain. I managed to escape unscathed. What about the rest of my crew? They could be anywhere on PNF 404. I've got to find Alpha and Brittany. I hope they survived. Thank you. Okay, I need to, I think I need to turn this off real fast. Keep moving ahead. I think they're off. Yeah, okay, they should be off from now on. And there we go, there's the Joy-Con drift already! Look at him go! <laughs> oh boy, okay. Hopefully... Just twiggle it around, we'll fix it a bit. Huh? What in the... There are more of them? This plant's mushrooms are huge! So, uh, this is the first pick- I think this is the only Pikmin game where you don't start with the first Pikmin you find aren't red. I don't know what Hey Pikmin. I assume it's the same Hey Pikmin with Red Pikmin. I seem to have wandered to a strange neighborhood. Why are they coming closer? My whistle will scare them off. I'm surrounded! Maybe I should throw them. Get away from me! They don't appear hostile. Well, let me get this straight. I can round up these creatures by pointing at them and pressing B. And throw them with a. Yes. I ca I kind of love the tutorial in this game is like framed with like Charlie just trying to get rid of these things and actually learn how to use. I think that's funny. It's hard to check my surroundings. I love going outside, and I can't see, and I go, oh, I just press the L to check my surroundings, and it helps me every time. Ryan, would you eat the Pikmin? No, I, would, I wouldn't, I couldn't. These guys sure are dedicated.
than they are. Little, little things. I just try to see away the enemies. I'm not gonna eat the Pikmin! And that's it for Charlie. He never appears after that. He's dead. I hope you enjoyed your time with Charlie, everyone. Sonic 3 fonts? What about Sonic 3? <laughs> there he is. Everyone's favorite Smash Brothers Ultimate character. It's a miracle! I'm alive and somehow unharmed! Alf. This is the SS Drake was about to land. We lost control, had to make an emergency escape. During the chaos, I was separated from my other two team members, as well as the ship itself. The ship's engineer, it's up to me, Alf, to find the SS Drake and my crew members. But yeah, I know, I, I do use the Sonic font uh, for all my titles. <laughs> yeah, you, got, you caught that, Rosa. What was that? There he is, everyone. Steve, the epic red, the epic red Pikmin. It appears the specimen I just spotted has company. What's that stuck in the branch? I know how to do this. I, I know how to do this, Elf. Even from Smashes and Pikmin? I remember, um... So... Well, I was hoping that was fruit. But it doesn't appear to be edible at all. Nevertheless, the red fellow seemed quite pleased now that it's free. Oh, wait a minute. They're supposed to be looking for those two missing. Looking around. Thank you. So, um, I remember before uh, Steve was announced for Smash, um, I actually got clued in to the fact that it was gonna be Steve. Because, um, someone with, like, insider information, I can't remember who, it's, like, one of the big kind of dudes who, like, doesn't, like, just do any 4chan link, like a guy with actual insider information. He said, like, oh, I can't believe any beta miners didn't pull this up, and I knew at that moment, um, I knew it was Steve. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be Steve. So I made a tweet on, like, on my other private account with a picture of Steve the Red Pikmin, and I was like, alright guys, here's the Smash character today. And after that, I was like, see, I told you all, it was Steve. That was my hilarious joke. So in a previous Pikmin game- oh, Alf found his Wii U gamepad. My Wii U gamepad! Thank goodness I found it! I can use it to locate the SS Drake! So in our previous Pikmin games, the the bridge building thing was like... Pikmin would like kind of hit the bridge, like extend it out. Um, I have a feeling they changed it in this game. Because in Pikmin 1 and 2, the bridge building mechanic was like super glitchy. So the, I'm, it's worse in 1 than it is 2, but they're both pretty weird. And like, it was easy in Pikmin 1 to like just kill Pikmin by accident, by the bridge like crushing them. So I feel like the bridge is, became like this, like picking up pieces, because it was just like easier to program. <laughs> Great, it still works. Of course, I expect nothing less from Copite Engineering. I'll check my surroundings by scrolling the Copad screen. Strawberry. 
Aha! Yes, the strike isn't that far from here. Maybe the other two crew members are there as well. I best head that direction. It is true, also, yeah, seeing the Pikmin, like, pick up the bridge is way cooler than, like, them just hitting it. Now we can start exploring with the help of the copad. Use the radar to check the map and the camera to take photos. Aw. Aw. But, I guess, like, talking about the deluxe version compared to the original version, this actually has, a, like, a decent amount of, like, changes that you wouldn't, like, expect it to have. There's a lot of, like, you know how, like, in the deluxe port of Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, they, like, changed Donkey Kong nose, and, like, that was one of the changes. There's a lot of, like, changes like that, I want to say, in this. A lot of Donkey Kong nose-esque changes. Well, a bit bigger than that. A thing is popping out some sort of sprouts. Uh, one of the main changes is, um... There, well, hold on. Aha, I see. This is how these little creatures propagate. How incredibly fascinating! Yeah. Uh, so one of the changes is, uh, Pikmin in this game generally keep up with you a bit more faster, is one of them. Um, they change the charge feature... Which I'll show when we can, like, show that off, because you need more than one Pikmin type to do it. Uh, there's just been a lot of general changes. I, I want to say, honestly, in the realm of, like, Switch Deluxe ports, this has had, like, some of the most changes. Like, way more than you think it would. This got a lot of quality life changes, and... It's interesting, because, uh... I don't think literally Captain Toad got any besides some bonus levels. Um, Donkey Kong only got Funky Kong. And there's like the difficult. There's, there's a lot of. I, I want to say this is one of the most like changed Wii U games. Because uh, playing this on Switch is like fundamentally different than playing it on Wii U because there's also no gamepad functionality. So you, there's different that. There's, there's a lot of changes. They got their first taste of blood. So I'll just explain it here. Uh, it's, it's gonna be why we forget Rock Pikmin, which is the next type. Um, the change they made in this is um, when you lock onto something and press charge, uh, only the Pikmin type you have, like that little thing down there, is the one that charges. So like. If you have, like, red and rock Pikmin, and you aim with uh, rock, uh, red currently on there, only red will charge. That's, like, a really useful feature. <laughs> Nintendo, uh, Nintendo, poor Nintendo Land. That, that game is stuck on the Wii U forever. There's nothing that game can do to escape. You haven't got Devil Thirds Deluxe yet. Oh, those are massive. They don't look edible. I have to do this by, like, throwing them. What even is left? Because Mario 3D World and this game were, like, the last two Wii U games that I really cared about. Put those fall here. That'd be a good time to press X to perform a charge attack. So they're not porting Smash. They're not gonna port Smash 4 to Switch. There's no point for that. Um, let's see. They're not gonna port the first Mario Maker or Splatoon 1. I think we could learn a lot from this kind of teamwork. I, I don't think they're. I feel like Nintendo has like a one Paper Mario per system thing. I don't think they do another. I don't think they port Color Splash. It feels too late. There it is, the SS Drake. The copad isn't picking up any signs of life in the immediate area. What am I supposed to do now? Little ears wiggle. 
Uh oh. Let me transmission. Who could it be? Alf, it's me, Brittany. You copy? Thank goodness. You're with the SS Drake, right? Made it through the landing in one piece. Thing is, I'm trapped somewhere. And I'm star- Oh no, we got cut off! I wonder how far away Brittany is. You see, you, you know. He's using a Wii U gamepad. He's absolutely using, like, Nintendo Wi-Fi. That's why I cut off. But at the very least, I'm thankful that she appears safe and sound. What's that strange sound? The sun is setting, which can mean that nocturnal predators are starting to wake up. I should probably get off this planet's surface for now. by Alf. Yeah, hold on. I want to bring this up real fast. I remember Sakurai made Dark Pit not a costume just because he had to have a different Final Smash from regular Pit. But then Alf, who drives a different ship from Olimar, is just relegated to a costume and drives Olimar's ship. Thanks for fucking nothing, massive hero Sakurai. I didn't make <laughs> Those supplies we brought with us from Kopai were destroyed in the crash landing. I only have three days worth of edible provisions left. That's juice in gaming. Starting tomorrow, I'll have to find some local food. Alf goes to Arby's. <laughs> We're shipwrecking this planet. Some creatures called Pikmin helped me find the SS Drake. But her cosmic drive key is nowhere to be found. You won't be going anywhere without that. Luckily, I made contact with Brittany. We'll set out to find her tomorrow. When I took off from the ship, the Onion took off flight as well. Odd, but amazing. Well. Sakurai hates specifically Pikmin and Modern Kirby. I, I I feel like Pikmin is, jokes aside, relatively well off in Smash for like a like a, a B tier franchise. <laughs> it could be must it could be much worse. I think it's weird. It took like three games to get like a Pikmin assist trophy because there's like a million enemies in this game, but that, that's about it. I've tracked down Brittany's signal. Right now, finding her is my highest priority. Or I'm also very concerned that our cosmic drive key is now missing. I don't find that. The Drake won't be able to fly fast enough to get us back to Kopai. That would be very, very bad. Oh, Ryan, are you going to find hidden Pikmin mural murals? Uh, I actually have it on any of my files. I might on this playthrough, though. I might go out of my way to do that. Maybe it's saying it's Australia. Yeah, uh, I believe the version of Earth in this game is, like, based on a prediction of, like, what Earth would look like in a million years or something. This is, this is Earth, uh... Pikmin never explicitly states it takes place on Earth, like, it never explicitly states it's a Pokepost-like game, but, uh, it is supposed to be Earth, post-something happening. But no attention is really ever drawn to it, which I like. I think that's cool. Just apply it. I think that's, like, neat to the idea of, like, I don't know, like a, like a post-apocalypse type game where, like, the apocalypse that happened didn't, doesn't remotely matter to any of the characters in the game or, like, the creatures around the world. Brittany should be here. Something is flashy on my map. 
Maybe it's her. Running out of sustenance. Sustenance for our quest! So I hope I find her before it's too late. Looks like the onion has followed me here. So where are the Pikmin? The only thing the, the I I've watched I watched the whole movie onward one night. Like I, I watched I watched the movie onward. The hit Pixar movie. I don't remember anything about that movie, but I remember the McDonald's commercial where Chris Pratt Jack Black says like sustenance for our quest. <laughs> There's thunder outside. <laughs> Well, that's right. Data file I found explained all of this. The onion is the Pikmin's nest. Go to install application. The copad lets me check the Pikmin status remotely. I love that the game like didn't update itself to, like have Alf adding like the Piklopedia, which is new to this game. It just it's just there now. <laughs> Alright. So uh I have beaten this entire, like, first stage. Like, I got everything possible done you could before. I'll try to do it, but I'm also going for full Piclopedia completion, which will make it a bit harder. Because, uh, part of, um, doing this game as fast as possible is you kind of, like, skimp out on, like, you know, keeping up your Pikmin count. Because what matters most is getting things done fast. Like, I remember, like, when I did my full, like, fast as possible playthrough, I only had, like, 20 yellow Pikmin. Throughout the entire game. But uh, I want to show off the Piclopedia because there's some really great writing in it. So I want to make sure we get every enemy. But I, won't, I won't be doing this. I'll, I'll go as fast. I want to go as fast as I can, obviously. Under like a certain extent. Can I just say, uh, these butterfly enemies are like the worst enemies in like the side mission modes where you can go as fast as possible. Because, um, they're very hard to aim at, and if you miss, they fly around for a bit, and you can't hit them at all. Is it? Hold on. Oh, it is. Oh, I'm missing three anyway, so might as well just go for all of them. We'll check the Piclopedia as, like, the days come. I'm pretty good at remembering, like, who we met that day, so... I, the Piclopedia was like the one major thing this- I- that was like the biggest problem I had with this game originally was the lack of the Piclopedia because it's like the best part of Pikmin 2 because it adds a lot to the world. There they are. Bull Borb. It's recap time! So, Ryan, who'd you meet today? Bulbor! DNF 404 is based off Earth and would like Earth projected. Yeah, yeah, 25, 20, 250,000, 250 million years from now. Great job with words. So, in general, um,. This is the easiest of the three Pikmin games by far. Um, admittedly, a lot of that is just because I like Pikmin 1 and 2, but they're kind of poorly designed. This is very- this game has like a lot of not buggy, poorly designed stuff, and Brittany's dead. Oh no! Brittany's just lying there! Oh, not too late. Pick up, Brittany, pick up! Please still be alive! Alf? Sorry about that. Just take a little nap. You're close by. Why, I, wasn't I moving, you ask? Hehe. <laughs> well, you know me. I'm a pretty slam sleeper. You know what all these creatures creeping about. But never mind that. Listen, I discovered it looks like a piece of fruit. Over there. 
I'm kind of stuck here for the time being. You go and check it out for me. Freddy doesn't care about surviving or being rescued. She just wants the strawberry. Whoa, it's even bigger than I thought it would be. This giant thing really is fruit. Go for the jackpot. I have to analyze it, the Drake. But how do I get it there? Best fruiting video games. Best, best looking fruiting video game. Right here. This is the best fruit in any game ever. I need to close my window. They're like, wind's blowing hard. I'll do that in a minute. But yeah, uh, this is the easiest Pikmin game. Oh, more dialogue. <laughs> what is that thing? Uh, half of it is, um, Pikmin 1 and 2 just have a lot of, like, not greatly designed stuff in it, which is why they're hard in the first place. But another thing is, um, there just is less looking. There is just less, like, big killer things in this game, I want to say, because, um, Pikmin 2 in particular has some very, like, Pikmin 2 has a lot of, like, high killing Pikmin enemies, like, they can kill a ton. There's a lot less of those in this game. And in particular, uh, Rock Pikmin right now, uh, they kind of, they kind of, like, bypass a lot because the biggest thing about Pikmin, like, the thing that kills Pikmin the most is, like, squishing things, because no Pikmin can avoid that. The so Wallywogs, um, those things that blow rocks in their mouths, uh, they're like the, the big spider enemies, um, they all squish, which made them scary, but, uh, Rock Pikmin can't be squished, which I think makes them very vulnerable, like, very important Pikmin. These creatures use Pikmin too? You gave me a funny look. Look at them go. Look at them go. <laughs> I remember seeing these things at E3 for the first time, like having my mind blown. There's like this was the next Pikmin. Everyone thought it was like gonna be like green or like something. It was very funny the first Pikmin they show off was like a rock. <laughs> so their onion was trapped inside that crystal. So I have two types of Pikmin now. It's like the ones I want to use with L. Uh oh, spoiler alert, yellow Pikmin! Also, when I split it by type, I'll use white to dismiss the squad. Yeah, uh, actually, actually, uh, this is a big new feature in this game. Um, originally when you dismiss, it dismissed your whole team, but now, um, you yeah, rocks in the front. If I dismiss, it dismisses everyone but ro uh, rock, which is really useful. I, I get there's just a lot of just quality of life changes in this, and I appreciate that. Make sure it's unforgiving. Also, I forgot to comment on it, but I did like Liv's message earlier that says Britney is the best looking fruit in the video games. He's gay. Oh, real fast, uh, it's raining outside. I need to close my window real fast. Okay, so it's hailing. <laughs> it's also hailing. <laughs> it was like not cloudy at all today. Now it's like raining. Oh, the Drake is sending us a message. Analyzing recovery. Look at this, this is the best looking shoot. This is like the Wreck-It Ralph goo. Like when Ralph falls into goo and Ra Ralph falls into goo a lot in Wreck-It Ralph. And it looks like that. There's a lot of Wreck-It Ralph goo in this game. Large quantities of Pikmin. Picotimenium U detected. This is a seed bearing fruit. Making cultivation on Kopai possible. Use from this fruit is safe for consumption by crew members. Hot fruit file to the copad. We store the results of our analysis.
I don't know much about plants. Ask Brittany to write the reports. She is the botanist, after all. So, uh, in general, about rock Pikmin, I generally consider them a more interesting version of a uh, purple Pikmin. Because they kind of have the same gimmick, that they're, like, they're the big heavy hitters. But, uh, purples are, like, broken to, like, an absurd degree. I, I find rock Pikmin are balanced more interesting and have, like, a... They also have an overworld use, which makes them more interesting. Because, uh, purple Pikmin's only gimmick was they carry good. Like, they can carry, like, ten... They count for ten Pikmin. And then they were strong. But, uh, rock Pikmin, I think, are more interesting because, uh, they can't latch onto enemies. Which is, like, a, the way, like, Pikmin do damage a lot fast. So they do a lot of damage, but they can't latch on. I think is interesting. And it, again, they also have, like, an overworld function, which I think Pearl Pikmin lacked and made them a little less interesting. Okay. In general, uh, Rock and White both kind of feel like upgrades from, like, the Pikmin 2, because, like, White Pikmin's big, big advantage was they could carry fast, for one. And, uh, Wing Pikmin kind of feel like an extension to that, because they can take, like, faster pathways. Which I think is interesting. Alright, let's say Brittany. Alf, I've been waiting for you! I can't break through this wall! Do something, Alfie! Yay! Yay! Woo! I can't tell you how happy I am to get out of this place. I'm sick of sleeping outside, and I'm super hungry. Uh, what's with your entourage there? What's that you say? They're called Pikmin? They're cute. You don't have time for cuteness right now. Look over there, Alfie. Let's work together and nab that huge piece of fruit. Okay. Throw me. Okay, let's throw some Pikmin. Okay. I'll take it from here. Oh, oops. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Alright. I'm up there. And what I like to do usually now is, um, this is my first instance, like, multitasking. I give Brittany a bit of a, a few rock Pikmin. And I send her back here to go take a, on a gate. By Alf works on other things. So, the reason in- oh, there's Louie. Lu Louie appearance. You mean data files about this? I think about it. Who is intended to go here? Yeah, okay, yeah, let's just to go here. The reason this is my favorite Pikmin game is, uh, my favorite part of Pikmin is getting things done as fast as possible. And this is the game that has the most options to do it. Is, like, built the most around it. Which is why I like it the most. Uh, I, kn I know people have problems with, like, this game. Like, I think people... I generally think Pikmin 2 and what are the, like... I don't really know, actually. Things are all over. But this is, this is my favorite of three games. I didn't break enough rock Pikmin. It's fine. I I lost one. Okay, well, one just stuck over there. That's why. But yeah, uh, multitasking is my favorite part of these games, and this is the one that encourages it the most, which is why I like it the most. Uh, Pikmin 4. Yeah, any day now. Another thing they added too is, um, if a Pikmin is carrying something, like they are right now, if you whistle them, they won't come back. They'll stop for a second and make sure you want them to come back, which is useful. Because originally, uh, like, if a pig were kind of grouped up and you wanted them to keep going, it was really easy to accidentally, like, whistle them back. I'm gonna set a few reds Britney's way, too. Pikmin 4 Nintendo GameCube. Great job, everyone. Uh, I, I also, you could see an electric gate right there. Um, I do feel like yellow Pikmin were nerfed a bit in this one. They're not as bad as Pikmin 1, but they're almost obsolete besides a few missions. But they are still, like, 
I want to say less. They, they buffed red Pikmin in this because uh, purples are gone, so you need red Pikmin for a combat again. But uh, yellow's got a little more in this one, too. They're nowhere as bad as Pikmin 1, which is the absolute worst of, like, yellow Pikmin just not being very useful. <laughs> oh, what could this be? Radar's picking up something. The radar is detecting a signal of some sort. Maybe it's a new type of food. Let's go and look right away. Uh, purple Pikmin are in this game. Uh, purple and white are both in this game. They're just only uh, in the challenge mode. So you can't get them in the main game ever. They're only they're only in the, not only they're only in challenge mode. I think they're only in the collect fruit challenge mode in particular, which is interesting. So you, I I imagine it's because uh they don't have a lot of use in uh the defeat enemies one. Is um purple hip Pikmin used to be like the big combat Pikmin, but they were severely nerfed in this one because um. They don't do damage when you throw them anymore. They only stun, so they're more useful for, like, parrying things. I imagine that's why they're not anything else. They're also back. Oh, yeah. I, I, again, um, I don't really mind that purple and white aren't in this, because, um, I felt in particular purple Pikmin weren't that interesting, and they make a lot of the fights in Pikmin 2 not that interesting. Maybe that's a hot take. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Alright, let's go. Oh, we got them. Okay. Because uh, most of the fights in Pikmin 2, for as hard as they were, a lot of them just came down to throw purples, like dodge and then throw purples. I find the fights in this game tend to be more involved. Now, the, the enemy ones are still pretty easy because it's just usually charged, but like boss fights in particular are a bit more interesting, I, th I think. I think in this one. Uh, particularly the last two bosses in this game, I think are like the best in the series. We'll get there when we get there, but uh, the, two, the two like last bosses in this game are like the best. Alright, uh... So we can actually like do half this puzzle right now, but uh, there is a a thing you can get at the halfway point for this puzzle, so it's okay. I don't wanna. Pretend there. Yeah, I'll, you know. God, the thunder's really loud outside. Um, so as you can tell. Come on. We can't get to the other side of this puzzle yet, because we need we need yellow Pikmin. You don't you also need uh, the third captain too to to do that. Alrighty. Back. The thing I hate about this uh first day with rock Pikmin is um the rock Pikmin onion is really far away. So it takes them forever to like carry enemies back. So I usually dedicate this when I'm not doing like a fastest possible playthrough. Oh, it's drowning. <laughs> oh no, the water's lethal to Pikmin! I need to blow the whistle with B to call the Pikmin back over here. I there's a lot of enemies near the water you throw rock Pikmin towards. I feel like I accidentally kill them. Well, I don't kill them. They don't drown very fast in this one, I feel like. Uh, that is actually one of the changes uh, in Ultra Spicy Mode. Um... Oh yeah, the day's almost over. It's sundown before too long. Alf, didn't you mention the Nocturnal Predators will attack any straight Pikmin? Vivian cameo. Looks like the rocks in the area of this nest th thing we call an onion can get back on their own, though. 
I better call back the Pikmin. You aren't in my squad. Before it's too late. I could be tired of walking around to collect all the Pikmin. Well, I'll make sure that when you press any of the SS Drake, the whistle will be sound to call all Pikmin back to the Onion. That's a new feature, too, that I forget is in this game all the time, is, um... You can go to the SS Drake to call all the Pikmin back to the SS Drake, but they have to walk there, so... If they're not back by sundown, they still die. Alright, let's get this puzzle started. We can probably get to the boss by tomorrow. On the opposite shore, there are materials for building a bridge. But if Alf and I work together, we can get it done in no time. To ask Alf to join the squad. Move the curse. Okay, yeah, that's the tour. I know, Brittany. There are spots for the few we can survive the night. Uh. I think the only spot where the pigment can survive the night is the, if the rock pigment or the onion area. I don't know about otherwise. Unless I'm forgetting something. That'd be a funny feature, though. I've heard people bring up an idea of, like, nocturnal pigment. Where, like, there are pigment you can bring it at night. But, like, only one type of pigment or something, maybe. Like, uh... I kind of like how the mushroom enemies, like the mushroom plants and plants versus zombies, like, they are more useful at night, but like, maybe there's a weak- I don't know, that'd be interesting, I guess. So, uh, back when I was saying earlier, um, one of the changes in Ultra Spicy Mode I've learned is actually, um, Pikmin drown a bit faster, apparently, what I've read. Oh, hello. A fire bloom in that pigment's head. It's amazing how many plant-like qualities they possess. I wonder if they develop any new skills in that flower. I'll have to keep a closer eye on them. Uh, the changes in ultra spicy mode off the top of my head is, um... You only have 60 Pikmin, which is the big one. Um... Hello. Pikmin was coming from there. You only have 60 Pikmin at a time. Days are slightly shorter, I think, is what it is. And uh, Pikmin drown faster. And those are the three major changes I know of. I didn't know that because I am awesome. This game would never drown Pikmin. Alright, cool. We're all together. Go home. There we are. Just chilling. There they go, to their little ship. Ryan, how do I beat the Tide Pain Demon? Uh, get your Rock Pikmin out. Um, you're gonna want to throw it at that enemy's armor first to break it. Fringe fail Bulborb can't even catch me, lol. There they are. Fusion. This is what Homeworld thinks of fusion. Very interesting. The two of them merge into one. Ah. Let them hold their hands. Let's analyze the other fruit too. Face wrinkler. Sunseed berry. Zest bomb. I ration out the juice. No extra gulps for anyone. This is great. You actually have a little bit of juice buffer. Look at those. Look at those numbers go up. 
Look at those statistics. I discovered a mysterious broadcast signal. What on Kopai could it be? I'd be our captain. Something tells me that I might relate to that person who has been leaving all those data files for us. I'll have to find out tomorrow. The suspense is killing me. Fruit shares are rising. I only have one container of Arlo juice left. I think the uh, current world record for this game is eight days, I believe. Which is crazy to me. It's amazing how the Pikmin freaked you like that. I am indeed fortunate they were present. They appear to be intelligent, friendly creatures. Perhaps we could get them to help us look for fruit. We need to focus on every drop of our energy to get the Pikmin to help us gather fruit. We also need to find the Cosmic Drive Key. We won't get home without that. Right. Let's focus all our energy on retrieving fruit and the key. I will think of nothing else. To find you the captain. We need to rescue him as well. Right. We'll just get the food, the key, and the captain. Is that everything? What's that signal coming from over there? I really hope it's the captain. Let's hurry over there and find out. What color does Arlo bleed? I, that's a loaded question. <laughs> Good idea. He might be hogging all the fruit for himself. Alright, uh, so a cool thing about this game is um, there's actually a lot of dialogue in this game if you press Y. I wonder what's sending out that strange signal. I hope it's something edible. Although I can't quite imagine a signal that one could eat. Maybe it's the captain's co-pad. That's indeed a possibility. We should investigate this immediately. Immediate investigation initiated. And I think this is a good time to go look. So, uh, Brittany also has uh, fruit bios. This wasn't the original game. Uh, these were the only bios in the original game. The only this is not the Piclopedia. As a scientist and as a food eater, I'm excited about this new source of potential nutrition. I just wish it didn't look like I was covered in pimples. Luckily, the taste of it's like delicious and scrumptious had a baby. Let's gather as many of these as we can. The fruit is so sour that one bite makes my whole face want to climb into my mouth and pull it back out. It's high in pictanium you though. But I guess I'll try adding small amounts of the juice to other food. Better food. This one's sour, but smells really nice. I wonder if the juice could work as a deodorant. I also wonder if he could spare a little for the experiment. Finally, I wonder if the captain would notice if I doused him in it while his back was turned. Brittany, Brittany's very mean. <laughs> Here's the uh, Piclopedia. Uh, I I don't think we can read all of these. Oh, spoiler alert! There's here's all the enemies. <laughs> I don't think I'll have time to read all of these because um, there are 55 of these bios, and then five bios per enemy. There, there's a lot of these. Um, the general gist though is um, Alf gives you the actual information that's important to know, like for gameplay stuff. Like he tells you like strategies to help defeat them. Like how much they weigh, and like you know weaknesses. Uh, Brittany just talks about how much she fucking hates everything, which is which is funny. Um, Charlie, kind of just like he's kind of like Alf. He kind of gives a bit of a battle strategy, but he also like he's also a bit of an idiot, which is funny. Uh, Louis gives recipes, which is hilarious. <laughs> he tells you how to cook the enemies, and then all of our he gives look, look at this three pages. Olimar gives the juicy information. He, like, tells you, like, world-building stuff, which is cool. Like, I'll read this one. Uh, this is one of the biggest fun facts of this game. Um, Although initially identified as a juvenile bull borb, groundbreaking new research indicates that this creature is, in fact, a member of the breadbug family, a close relative of the vanilla breadbug. It escapes predation before Rumimiki. Unique adaptation of this bull borb's crimson colorization Allows the species to safely commingle such effective adaptation obfuscation 
by a prey species rare, indicating this clever creature is a master of mimicry. So yeah, um, Red Bug is an enemy from Pikmin 1 and 2. It's not in this game, but um, Dwarf Bulborbs aren't actually related to regular Bulborbs. Uh, they are just uh, a member of the uh, Red Bug species, kind of pretending to be one, which is really cool. I'll definitely, uh, I think what we'll do for these is, um, we'll do Joy-Con Drift. Um, at the end of the stream, I'll read a few of them, probably. We'll probably end up doing for these. I know, I will definitely read the, out. for sure I want to read the, uh, Brittany ones, because they're usually, Brittany and Charlie tend to have the funniest ones. And we'll usually, we'll take a bit of a look at these, too. I'll just kind of give basic information. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we will read them, because I think they are, I think they are the best. One of the best scenes in this game, but anyway. Go back to the game. That is, uh, uh, the Kirby and Chad brought this up. Uh, bread bugs aren't even in this game. Um, two things, uh, the bios actually do mention enemies that aren't in this game. Which is cool. Like, it gives, like, a bit of, like, a world building. Like, oh, even though the enemies aren't in this game, like, they still exist. Which is cool. The other thing is, um, some of Olimar and Louis' bios are lifted from Pikmin 2. Oh, I think all the enemies that are in Pikmin 2 have their bios kind of reused, which is fair. Uh, there's 55 enemies, and they were already writing 5 bios per enemies. I'll give them a bit of a break <laughs> for, like, reusing a few. Alamar's too smart to this job. My friend Erica once described Alamar as like a dude who graduated from college and can't get a good job. Oh, hold on. I like being turned into boss fights because she's my favorite. What? What's this data file doing all the way out here? My search for treasures continues with no luck. I can't fly back to Hokitate without procuring a few priceless artifacts. I'm sensing something da valuable up ahead. I'm also sensing danger. If someone finds this data file, please send word to my son. And I didn't make it. Captain Olimar. Captain Olimar? Another captain who's been through here? He's from Hokitate. Feel from their planet go to such extremes to scavenge treasure. Maybe it's all the vegetables they eat that makes their chum treasure crazy. Just had to say, looks like all of our men is headed up ahead. Better be careful. Oh, I lost connection. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. No, wait, why is it connected to my room? Oh, okay, hold on. I have no idea what happened there. Alamar has a so yeah. Alamar has a, a whole family actually. He has a, a wife, two kids, and a dog. So if I recall correctly, uh, before this game came out, um, I don't think Alamar was in any press thing. Like he was completely hidden for the most part. Besides like a few teases. So I remember, I, I think I remember being very distressed reading that message for the first time. <laughs> Where's the first boss? This is not a very hard boss, to be frank. <laughs> I, I do think of this boss a lot because uh, this was the E3 tech demo boss for this game. So I remember watching a lot of footage of this boss. <laughs> They used it like in every demo. And now he's basically useless. <laughs> yeah, they mentioned Olimar was in the game, but they never specified how. Great job. You all did you all latch onto the part that wasn't attacked. Great job. I, 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 it was very, dis I, I watched like a playthrough of someone playing this game for the first time recently. And they were like very distressed <laughs> reading about all of our potentially being dead. I 
Yeah, he's almost dead already. Did it. They found Pikmin on iPhone. Pikmin on iPhone! Where the signal is coming from? Then that means... You still don't know where the captain is. Okay then. For now we'll take this back to the Drake analysis. I like it could be useful. I remember, uh, one of the big things about this game was just how big the bosses were. Because, um, the bosses in this game are a lot bigger than Pikmin 1 and 2 for the most part. There's like more dedicated like boss fight arenas, pretty much. Because in, uh, in 1 and 2, you would usually just find the bosses in the overworld. This game bosses are much more like an event, which is neat. This one's really easy though, so <laughs> it's not a great first impression. But the other ones are really cool. Again, particularly the last two bosses, I think are like some of the best bosses in the series. Also, also cool is, um, originally, uh, bosses that were this big, like, the few that were this big, you couldn't carry them back. Usually, they usually just disappear or, like, drop, like, or shrink. What's really cool about this game is you could carry the whole huge boss corpse back. And I remember when this game first came out, I was, like, my mind was blown by this. Like, that you could do this. Because other big bosses, you couldn't do this with, like, they, like, shrink down and just, like, drop a piece of them. It was like the coolest thing in the world to me, like you could like drag these back. <laughs> Which sounds dumb. But that's how it, that's how it was. You yeah, you can carry like 90% of the characters in this. There's only like a couple enemies that like vanish or shrink. Off the top of my head. There's um one of the stompy enemies, which I'm forgetting. Uh one of the enemies that's actually you can show it actually real fast. Follow me. There's an enemy in the area we can't actually fight yet. Um, that one down there. Uh, when you kill this thing, it just drops, it drops its tail. That is an enemy from Pikmin 2. Also. What Pikmin enemies have been in every game? I'm trying to remember. Uh, Bulborb is definitely... Hold on. Brittany's Wii U gamepad. Oh, a message from the Drake! Analyze and recovered item. An ancient communication device used on this planet. It contains technology unknown to Kopai and is emitting a signal even now. Data Glutton. Well, I'll take a look at this tonight to see if we can have any use for it. I have a few ideas with the engineer expertise. Uh, so, uh, I'm trying to think what enemies would ever game. There's Bulborb, uh, Dwarf Bulborb, uh, Bull Bear and its dwarf version. Uh, not the Wallywog, but the yellow Wallywog has been in every game. Because, uh, the regular Wallywog isn't in this game. And I have a feeling it's because Wallywog's got... Who's the Rock Pikmin? There. Uh, Wallywog's got nerfed really badly in this game because Rock Pikmin make them into a joke. Like, it wasn't worth... It. I imagine, because there actually is, like, a scrapped second Wallywog enemy in this game. There's, like, one with, like, a rock in its, like, stomach. And I imagine what happened from, like, a design perspective is, like, Wallywogs were already so useless. <laughs> you didn't really need another one. I imagine they just scrapped it because of that. Uh, there are a few scrapped enemies for this game. Uh, most are previous enemy games. Um, Emperor Bulblax is in the files for this game and is somewhat functionable. I think I would I wish he was brought back because I like the idea because um Emperor Bulblax oh this. He didn't even stop spinning out seeds. With 
Pikmin inside the onion still seem to be increasing in numbers. Apparently, once the surface population reaches 100, new Pikmin are born inside the onion. It means that a maximum of 100 Pikmin can be active outside the onion at any one time. Yeah, uh, Emperor Boblax is the final boss of Pikmin 2. I hate him. He's a terrible boss fight. <laughs> I hate that boss fight a lot. It's not very good. Um, but he's brought back in Pikmin 2. And in Pikmin 2, he's a joke. Like, he's the easiest boss in the whole game. And I was hoping he would be brought back in this, just to continue the trend of him getting more and more useless, which I think would have been funny. A Pikmin- I, I honestly think the Pikmin boss fights like final ones get better with each game. I think one has the worst fight far. Two is just really good, but has a pretty easy way to like cheese it a bit. I think the final boss of this game is pretty damn fantastic. It is true, Emperor Boblox isn't Hey Pikmin. <laughs> Alright, so I think we can't actually do anything else for now. Area. Um. Yeah, because that requires a yellow. Every we can't even go over here until later. Uh, that needs blue. I think for the rest of the day, just kind of do miscellaneous stuff like it numbers up. Yeah, Emperor Boblock is only in cave. That's actually interesting. Uh. Emperor Boblox only being in caves is kind of the in-universe reason he sucks in Pikmin 2, because, um... His model's actually different in Pikmin 2 than it is in 1. He has less moss on his back, which kind of implies, like, since he's underground, he's there, he's underground and, like, a infant, which implies he's, like, weaker, which I think is interesting. This entire chat, like, stream is talking about, like, Pikmin lore I find interesting. I have, like, no jokes. I've, like, made, like, three jokes the entire stream. I'm sorry. You've all, you've all, like, have enabled me to talk about, like, Pikmin trivia. Uh, there's something we can do, actually. Hold on. Let's take, let's take a picture. Take a picture. Alright, Alf. Get over there. Uh, Brittany, you stand. Stand right there. Alright, uh... Listen. Alright, Joy-Con Drift's gonna make this really fun. Joy-Con Drift's making this really fun. There we go. <laughs> There's the picture. Alright, uh, I think it's like literally nothing. Here, we can get this. But the one thing left we can do is grab that. And this. There we go. This, we found things. Yeah, I have Joy-Con Drift. Uh, it was pretty manageable up until like this week. <laughs> Where it's like officially have gotten... Awful. Here, let's go. Let's take let's take another Britney picture. I feel I feel like it's on brand for me. Ooh. I missed something, Purge. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Alright class, you can do one silly picture. That's a great, <laughs> great picture. There we go, great T-pose. Those were some great images. Great job, Brittany. Alright. Okay.
by PN404, I am going home. Oh, let's look at that image. That's... No, not the eShop. <laughs> look at that real fast. All right, here's here's an image I took of like getting a bunch of fruit in one day because it always looks cool. Um, <laughs> goodbye PNF four oh four. I am going home. <laughs> what? Taking a lot of well, uh, this is exposes a lot about me. I have one friend online. Ball bombs are great. I, I think Pikmin is like the best enemy lineup in any game ever. Every enemy in this game is so good, like design wise and like like place in the world wise. It's, I, it has like such a. <laughs> I remember when Smash 3DS came out. Hee hee hee. New fruit. Yes. When Smash 3DS came out, I was like really angry there wasn't any more Pikmin enemies. There's like only like the Bulborb and like the iridescent flint beat the glint beetle. I was like so mad it was only those two. We have to build our juice supply like this. We'd be alright for a little while. Alright, no dust so far. No deaths. We covered the communication device that was inside the armored Maudad. According to Al, this device contains parts that may expand the Drake's communication range. They never seem so excited. More than happy to write to today's report why Alf examines the device. Sometimes he can be so diligent. So speaking of Smash Run, um... I remember before Smash 4 came out is when I was getting into Game Explained for the first time, like watching their channel. And they did like a discussion video. And one of the guests told them, like a Nintendo rep told them that K Rule was gonna be in like Smash Run as a boss. And I believed that, and when the game came out, I was like, Who the fuck is the K Rule Smash Run boss? Really, now you expanded the Drake's receiver range. Ah, thanks. They don't call me the keen engineer for nothing. Nobody calls you that. I know. The origin of the signal is unclear. Maybe it's the captain. We should investigate this at once. Good idea, Alf. Let's do it. The memo data file we found was left behind by someone of the planet Hokitate? Correct. I wonder how Hokitation would fare on this planet. They're vegetarians, you know. Vegetarians? Does that mean what I think it means? I think it means that they don't eat meat, then... Yes. Hokitate is well known for its pick bit carrots. I tried them once. They were kind of gross. You? Ate vegetables? I can hardly believe it. It's my duty as a botanist. Those old carrots aren't really suited to a Kobatite palate. Right, but if we ate vegetables, maybe we'd have to travel 279,000 light years to get food. Uh, so that is, uh, that is lore. Um, all of our species, uh, is different from Alf and Brittany's species. They are Copites, and he is a Hogatation. Uh, Copites only eat fruit, and, um, Alf spe uh, all of our species of Hogatations only eat vegetables. Uh, which is actually technically true, because Louie also eats bugs. <laughs> I, uh... Oh. You know, whenever I watch those, like, Smash... Speaking of Smash, whenever I watch those, like, Smash cutting down the roster videos... I feel like, um... Alf... I mean, uh... King can't roll Ridley and Mewtwo are always in, like, the characters people cut list. I'm just like, I'm always just like, why would they cut characters who've been demanded for years who are very hard to, like, acquire? <laughs> why would they keep Joker but not Ridley? <laughs> ouch, 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 my face. Alfie, are you okay? Alfie, I said, are you okay? 
Oh man, I haven't been separated again. Sure, is dark in here. Everyone, a special yellow Pikmin appearance. I like yellow Pikmin. What are these Pikmin doing? If they ever made a Pikmin 4, I've talked about this maybe once or twice, if they ever made a Pikmin 4, I would like it if the captains from this game and the captains from Pikmin 2, like, teamed up in some way, for some reason. Is another onion? Yes, you'd like to live. Yep, these are the, the lightning Pikmin. So, oh my god. <laughs> uh, yellow Pikmin being immune to light was added in Pikmin 2. It wasn't in Pikmin 1. It was added in Pikmin 2 because um, yellow Pikmin had like nothing in Pikmin 1. They could only be thrown high and carry bomb rocks. And there wasn't a ton of situations for those, admittedly. You didn't ever need a ton. But Pikmin 2 added the ability to like the lightning thing. That made them like way more useful. I think part of the reason I want the Pikmin 3 captains and the Pikmin 1 captains to, like, team up is because I think... I think Brittany would hate Louis. I think she would despise him. I think it'd be very funny to, like, see, like, written out. Electricity was planned with Pikmin 1 and got cut. That's probably true, because uh, Pikmin 1 had a lot of stuff cut. The thing that always boggles my mind the most about Pikmin stuff that was cut is when I watch the Pikmin 1 trailer, like the very first one, or this might be even the credits of the game, is um, when the Wallywog dies and falls over, its corpse crushes Pikmin, like after it dies. Like, it, like, falls on the floor and then falls on its side, and when it falls on its side, it still kills Pikmin. Which I think is fucked up and evil. <sighs> Get to be outside again. Getting claustrophobic in that cave. Hey there! Hey, there's Alf! SS Drake! Alf! I'm over here! Alf on the Zoom call. Like. Ah, Brittany, thank goodness, you're okay. See, you're on the other side of the river. The first priority is to reunite, so let's work together. Please give me instructions. Got it! This place is absolutely freezing. If we don't move, I'm afraid we're going to die of exposure. Aw. That is, we don't die of starvation first. The co-pad in this game is very funny. Oh, they're talking. Really? You know, I have big ears. Wow! <laughs> uh, the co-pad in this game is very funny. Because it was very explicitly designed as, like, you know, it's supposed to be the Wii U gamepad. <laughs> but, like, this isn't a Wii U game. So, like, that kind of gets lost. Right, there's a swooping stick. This is a, this is a Pikmin staple. This has been every, this, this is a classic enemy. Everyone loves this dude. Everyone loves this swooping switch bug. I mean, I, great job. I'm doing a great job hitting him. Why are they hit? Where are they going? <laughs> there we go. Right, there we go. Just walk. 
rock pools over there. The water. Walk. I'm really curious what we what the development of Pikmin 4 is like. I don't- I have no idea what happened to Pikmin 4 once- I don't- I can't even begin to predict what happened to that game. I- I- the, the development of that game is so weird to me. I don't- I have no idea what happened to- Okay, well, great job. We already lost- we lost our first Pikmin because they <laughs> locked up the wrong thing. The, the most recent thing he said about Pikmin 3, Miyamoto, is, um... He said something like, We've reached a point in development where they can start talking about Pikmin things. Like, they keep- I mean, like, he's reached a point in development where he can't talk about things they, like, it's a thing that's happening. Is what he said, but I don't even know how true that is. That game just lived in a I have no idea what happened to that game whatsoever. It's just a mystery. I do believe, uh, at one point he was probably talking about Hey Pikmin when he said Pikmin games were in development. That probably was Hey Pikmin. But there was a thing he said after Hey Pikmin came out that implied he was, they were making like the next actual Pikmin. So who, so who knows at this point what actually happened to it. Making them all the rocks. Uh, you go there. I'll tell me to go there. Hey, go. Good theater. That was my really good bit. Thanks for coming. Alright, these are a safer version of a very dangerous Pikmin 2 enemy. The snowballs these dudes uh, throw cannot actually kill Pikmin. Their normal versions are later in the game. And here's the best enemy in the game. Look at this dude. Hold on, look at this dude. Look at his snout. Look at his snout. This is the best enemy in every game ever. GTA loading screen guy. <laughs> Everyone, check this out. Look at this. What does this look like? What does this look like? Look at this beat. The captain, uh, so that's what, so if you didn't catch the supposed to be, that's the president from, uh, Pikmin 2. Um, He's not actually in this game physically ever. He actually is in uh, all of our side story. He's like, a, he's like a cameo in that. I need one of you. Shacho. Yeah, Shacho. And he appears in one of the data files, so there, there's, there's a little reference to hit character Shacho. Shacho fans will be very pleased with Pikmin 3. Deluxe. Olimar canonically hates his job, so... I don't know if we'll do the Olimar side story in this stream, but, um... There, half of Olimar's dialogue in that mode is just him saying he misses his wife and kids. It's just him, like, repeatedly saying how much he misses them. Olimar fucking hates his job. Uh, yeah, they're over there. 
path they're gonna take to do that. Okay, it's safe. There's an enemy there. Try my commentary sometimes it becomes uninteresting. I have to enter like think mode for a sec few seconds sometimes. But they're all scattered. So, uh, <laughs> they announced the nominees for the Video Game Awards, which is very exciting, I know. A very great award show, always every year. Um, last year at the Video Game Awards, I actually streamed it. Um, and it's... They can't carry it because the bridge is not done. Um, I streamed the BGAs last year, and it's the worst stream I've ever done, ever. Um, it was so bad, I never uploaded it. Like, so I have an archive channel. I never loved the video game awards. It was so bad. It was because both the both the video game awards were very boring. I also let way too many people into the call. It's like it was it was a completely uncomprehensible stream. Yeah, I did. It's a it's a lost stream. It's not worth finding because like the only funny part was like the first five minutes, and then we got all very bored, and then I let way too many people in, and it was a mess. I won't be doing that again this year. These guys finished bad. I have to go pick up my yellow pick from daycare. They're still back over here. Make your own video game awards. <laughs> That'd be a funny bit to do. Give every award to Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. Oh fuck. Oh no, yellow! Oh my god. I feel like we lost an embarrassing amount of Pikmin just now. Yes, the bridge is complete! Now I can finally reunite with Brittany. I don't really care about the video- I don't think anyone actually really cares about the video game awards. Um, that being said, looking at the nominees, I haven't played Hades, but I hope it wins. I, I tend to just objectively root for, like, the smallest game that ever gets nominated. Because uh, Celeste got nominated before I actually even played Celeste, and I still wanted Celeste to win that year. It didn't win. It was never gonna win. But that's the one I wanted to win. Because I, I don't really care about anything else that nominated. <laughs> I, I played Animal Crossing, and Animal Crossing, like... I have lots of problems with New Horizons, but like, it's a game that, like, you know, it got me through a hard time, like every, like a lot of people did. You know, Animal Crossing came out right when vaguely gestures all of that happened. The real world, and it was kind of, it was nice, even if I have problems with the game. I wouldn't, I wouldn't find it winning just for like sentimental reasons. It's not gonna win because it's not a big AAA realistic looking game. The only video game award I ever cared about is, uh, one time Luigi's Mansion 3 won, like, a special award for, like, visuals and gaming. I cared about that because it's the first time in my life I felt justified for anything. I don't think Paper Mario is nominated for anything, actually, no. Uh, I didn't really look at all of them. I looked at the fucking, like, uh, content creator awards, and every year I look at those and, like, never know who any of them are. <laughs> what? How was... How has Jerma, like, not got nominated for, like, that kind of award ever? Like, I genuinely mean it. Like, I don't give praise to, like, a lot of, like, online content creators, like, geniuses. Like, I, you know, I like a lot of online people. I think people, like, overhype some of them sometimes. Jerma is, like, genuinely, like, a Twitch artist. Like, he's, like, revolutionized how, like, people do stuff on Twitch. 
I think if anyone genuinely deserves like an award, like being an online person, I, I think he has genuinely changed like Twitch streaming. I think he, I think he, he would deserve. That's that's my take though. I feel weird talking to like other streamers why I stream. It's like illegal. I'm not allowed to do that. Mr. Uh, Wayne Radio probably should be nominated too for making happen. Cause uh, I played for you. I haven't watched that yet, but like that was a whole like fandom within its. That was like a whole cultural fandom type thing. I don't know. I don't really care that much at the end of the day. I guess. I guess the bigger thing is just, it's a good example. Of, like I don't know any content creators online at all. I don't watch a lot of people. <laughs> Half-Life VR has a Wikipedia page. True. I think I remember Holly tweeting about that. I think that's why I remember that. Alright, uh, I think we'll spend the rest of the day. We don't have time to do anything else. I'm going to pick up my yellow Pikmin. Think about Wade and Jerma is their streams are personality driven rather than game trip. That's true. That's that's very true. The game Jerma plays like rarely ever matters. <laughs> I, I can't remember, like, a, he, 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 he plays, like, games, and, like, half the reason to go to a Jerma stream is because of Jerma, not, like, the game he's playing. Why did I throw Brittany? What did I want her to do? Go meet back up with them. I should get an award for streaming three games very infrequently. <laughs> I like, I, I, Vivian, I've watched a couple of your streams, they're very fun. Good job, great job. A quick fun fact, actually, uh, if you play this game in co-op, because uh, they added co-op to Pikmin 3, and it does break a lot of things, um... If you play this game in co-op during the Britney segment right here, where she's alone, uh, there's like just two Britneys. <laughs> like, the other person plays as a second Britney. And that also happens during, uh, the Alf segment the start and the Charlie segment. You just play as a second Charlie and Alf, who are invisible to the other player. Yeah. Not everyone, we did it. We are, we are, not your ordinary. <laughs> Our father! We're in the Ice Age level! Look at Snow, we're in the Ice Age world, whoa! Hey, Shin. Hey, oh wait, where the fuck? Hey, Manny, check it out, look. It's, it's, it's Alf and Brittany from Pikmin 3. That's great, Sid. They can join, they can join the pack. And then Diego's like, I I'm Diego. Brittany's nutty adventure. <laughs> I have one good joke. I, I have like one good joke I've ever made. And it's the joke about like Sid at the slot getting into Smash Bros. And like <laughs> they're doing like the Sakurai presentation for him. And like Manny cuts in, like they're demonstrating Alf's final, like Sid's final smash. And then Manny's like, Don't worry, Sid, we'll help you out. And like the Sakurai's knitter is like, That's right. Sid's final smash, he's joined by by Manny and Diego for an all-out attack. That's my one joke I've ever made. Every single Final Smash now is characters joining other characters for an all-out attack. I'm trying to think of was... Joker's Final Smash is that? Hero's final smash is that. Banjo's is that, because the Jinjo's join him for an all-out attack. Terry's is not. Terry's is not that. Uh, Byleth is vaguely that. Mimit is that. 
And then Steve is technically that, because the enemies join him for an all-out attack. Every final Smash has an all-out attack with their friends. There we go, three Pikmin loss. Finally completed the bridge over to the other shore. And Brittany discovered a type of yellow Pikmin. Back their big ears, and excited to find what other unique characteristics they may possess. I have to observe them closely. I think they're cute to look at. Oh, what a day! I wonder how long we have to wait till the next Smash character. Um, I want to say probably December or early January is when we'll see the next one. BGA feels very proper for one, but it feels too obvious. I feel like we won't get one there. <laughs> So relieved that you're okay, Brittany. It was a close call. I never would have made it without those yellow Pikmin. Those little guys sure are helpful. For a mission success, we should throw a have a party. Think of the little Pikmin. Um, if any character gets revealed in the BGAs, if there is like a BGA character, I honestly think it's gonna be Crash. Because um, Crash is like a history of being at the BGA stuff. And like, I think it makes Troy Contrift. <laughs> there she is, T posing. Because uh, I think it's just too perfect. Like, they, like the Crash mascot suit guy, like come out on stage, just start saying shit, and then announce sm Crash for Smash. I think that'd be funny. I just really want the Crash suit guy to be like at a Smash reveal. That's like my dream. <laughs> I'm back. Crash is back. That was like the funniest thing in the world to me, was like the crash suit guy. Alright. Yellow Pikmin are going to be very important. Upcoming things. Uh, red Pikmin are always very important to have, a few of. Joy like Drift is making this very hard. Give me a second, I'm just gonna... You good? And then, uh... Jaycon Drift is making this very fun. Uh, I like usually. Yeah, that's good. It's at Crash's final smash will be an all out attack. Absolutely. Um, if Coco's not in an alt costume, she will absolutely be part of the all out attack. Uka Uka and Aku Uka Uka will help with the all out attack. It, it's perfect. Um, Crunch Bandicoot. <laughs> They'll be there. If they had Crash to Smash, what if it was like Banjo or like everything's based off Banjo Kazooie 1? And like only characters from, ba from like Crash 1 appear besides like Coco. Pana is like. Pana is like. Banjo's little sister's name? I forgot her name. I feel like a jerk. What's Banjo's little sister's name? She's like so important. I forgot her name. Oh, Tootie? Tootie? Tana is 2D, but like if 2D like successfully took off. Hey. Oh, soft and fluffy. When they make uh when they make uh Banjo 3, um 2D will be brought back as like a playable character, it'll be a big deal. Jeff Drift. I recall correctly, didn't bring two D. I I looked at the chat for a second and I drifted to the great, great, great. People are gonna be fucking everywhere. Yeah, I know about that. They didn't bring two D back because they thought she was boring. And let's be to be frank, there wasn't a lot else you could do with two D. I would be- I would- I think I'd be more upset about 2D if, like, three out of the- two out of the three main Banjo characters weren't girls already, so it's like, whatever. It's usually like- it'd be like, oh, it sucks they got rid of, like, the one girl character because she was boring, but in Banjo's case, two out of three of the most boring characters are girls, so, like, it's okay. It's all good. Alright.
<laughs> they don't break- they don't have fucking Tana from Crash 4 because she doesn't appeal to Sakurai's taste very much. Pretty has very cute sound effects in this game. I'll go grab that. Looks like someone took a tumble here in the fresh snow. Perhaps someone else is stranded here. If anyone else is rigging this, there are several electric tri electric <laughs> electrical contraptions in this area. If buried something in the snow, hopefully it's useful. I have yet to play Crash 4, because it's not anything I own. I would like to someday. I just want to say, um, I know there's a mix of opinions of the art direction of that game. I think it's great. Um, I think the characters in those games look the best they have, like, in years in that game. I like the original designs, too, for sure. But I think as I get older, I also just appreciate different takes on characters. I don't get mad, like, they don't always look the same. Like, uh... Dingo Dial in Crash 4 has, like, the best design of any character ever, I think. I'll actually step out back for a second. Isn't this... I'm sure I've seen it somewhere before. But where? I need to get this analyzed back at the Drake. Maybe it'll come back to me there. My, my take on redesigns, like, you know, the Crash 4 stuff, is like... The original versions aren't going away. And as I get older, like, I don't really mind... Seeing, like, you know, different takes on... Like, characters look the same for years. Like, it doesn't really matter to me if a character looks different in a couple games. And I, I appreciate a lot the Crash 4 team, you know, you know, taking, taking a risk and like doing their own thing. I think that's, I think that's notable. And I can respect it, like wanting to do that. We actually need Alf's yellow Pikmin. Did they all go back? Fine. It's kind of like, um, as I get old, I remember as a kid being very upset about, like, Smash, like, Subspace Emissary not having a lot of, like, Nintendo enemies. But, like, as I get older, I kind of appreciate just all the weird enemies in Subspace. I don't know. I kind of like just new weird stuff. <laughs> I'm not a very nostalgic heavy person. I, I've, I've come to learn. I don't really care about that kind of, like stuff, I guess, anymore. There they are with the boss. This is a great boss. To decide. This boss design is so good. Pikmin enemies are so... Look at this. This thing is so good. What was that thing? Copad Raider picked up life signal. That thing got the captain? The carpet has arrived. Alright, uh, so... I'm gonna get a few red Pikmin to go get those grapes. And then Brittany will go back to pick up the Pikmin we left behind. Not left behind, that are carrying things back right now. Fight Alf. I think another- oh, look. Drift. Another example I have, just like not caring about nostalgic bait stuff. Um, hold on. Receive me in transmission from the Drake. Analyze a recovered item. This undergarment makes any spacesuit electricity resistant. To think of it, they had these optional extras in the spacesuit shop on Kopai. We got instruction manual with it. Give them exploration notes. Yep. I know that, like, example of just, like, me not caring that much about, like, old nostalgic stuff is, um... People sometimes, like, get really up in arms with, like, Mario, like, main series Mario games, like, not bringing characters back, or, like, 
reusing things, but um, as I've gotten older, I've come to just like that all the 3D Mario is like different from one another. I don't know. I think it makes each one more special. Like they always have different things in them. an interesting boss fight because it's more like a kind of like a puzzle boss fight this is kind of the first example like the boss is kind of ramping up which is cool this will probably be more puzzly yeah I, I think the only two mario games they reference too much like the first and the third i'm tired i, I am very tired of mario 3. <laughs> it's a good game but like i'm over it it was it was good we didn't do it you don't have to do it anymore That that is like my favorite part of Odyssey. It's all the weird new stuff, which, which is my which is my favorite part of those games. I think everyone's tired. I think everyone is tired of, of the new Super Mario Bros. aesthetic. I don't know a single person who's like, oh yeah, keep doing it. <laughs> Inside that pod. I think in particular, I'm just tired of new Super Mario Bros. Grassland. That's what I'm particularly tired of. <laughs> I could never see a new Super Mario Bros. Grassland ever again, and I'd be okay. No, no, no. like New Super Mario Brothers Grassland? Well, how dare you not go with what the streamer's saying? You have to agree with the streamer. You have to agree with the streamer. If you don't agree with the streamer, you're wrong. I'm kidding, by the way. That wasn't obvious. <laughs> She's almost there. I can't switch back when she's in this menu. I very much like GameCube era Grassland Mario's, like the like the, the Grasslands from Mario DDR. I like I like how those look. What are you all doing? It's a very hard game to reach chat for. I'm sorry. Bernie, take charge. Super Smash Bros. Melee Kingdom Adventure Mode stage. I wanna- I live there in real life. That's where I live. It's the- it's the, it's the Melee Adventure Mode Mario st I live there in real life. I go to the golf course in the background all the time. Alright, we need to do the rest of the bridge build. on like Mario branding stuff. <laughs> uh, I am very tired of the new Super Mario Bros. look and I'm glad um I'm glad a lot of spin-off stuff is kind of over it now, I wanna say. It's like Mario Odyssey kinda has like a different looking grassland kind of area. Uh even like Paper Mario like I just drifted away from that because like Sticker Star kinda felt like the new Super Mario Bros. aesthetics and I feel like they've drifted away from that. Even like Mario Kart, 
like kind of drifted away from like the main Mario. I, I, I appreciate, I just like different looks at Mario because it's such an old series now. I just like when they do new things. All right, let's do it. Get up there, fellas. So, uh, yeah, there is still stuff like New Super Mario Bros. and Origami King, but it's like mostly enemies at this point, which is I'm fine with. Like, the aesthetic is very different now. Even like the Grassland and Origami King were very, like, just like not Paper Mario, like New Super Mario Bros. esque, and I think, I think that's nice. I kind of like, just like that Mario is a series where stuff can just exist. I think that is fun. We lost a rock. Steal it. Okay, now we lost it. Oh, wait, no, did we? I think we did. Uh, so, a quick fun fact about uh, Rock Pikmin. Um, rock Pikmin aren't good to charge. They're the only reason in the game you shouldn't charge. Because um, they're better to just throw. Which I think makes them more interesting than purple again. <laughs> There he is, Reggie Fusame. Ah, uh, it's great to see you, Elf. I've been harmed, and I must apologize for my stench. The inside of a monstrous belly is no flower garden. Until I have a chance to clean up, just breathe through your mouth. Now, I'm sure you dropped everything to find me first, so I'll leave the search for our crash ship, and we can fly off. Sorry, sir. I found the ship first. But, uh, I'm afraid to say, the Cosmic Drive key is lost on PNF 404. It's gone? Without that, we're stranded here. We're doomed. Kopai will starve. Wait a second. I had a data file in the belly of that beast. I know it was just some old junk data at the time, but maybe not. Read it for yourselves. I found a key today. There's something about a cosmic drive on it. Not that it's worth much. Get a nice souvenir to my son if I ever get back to Hokitate. So my search for treasure continues. I'll stop at nothing to find the ultimate prize. I just know there's gold on this planet somewhere. See? It's all of our fellow filed this report only recently. That key is our cosmic drive key. You know what that means? He must have landed a PNF 404 shortly before we did. You must find him somewhere on this planet. He'll be stranded here forever. Our new goal. We have to find Captain Alimar. Who could that be? Alright, so we carry these back. Um, I go over here. Wrong area. Wrong way. Uh, there's a shortcut to get back faster. We gotta push it out of the way first, or else we'll go the other way that takes longer. Where are the. Oh, fuck yeah. We gotta go pick up the, the red Pikmin. I'll go do that. Because uh, they were carrying back the grape all day. They're carrying back Rayman 3, the grape escape. Charlie talks like Otis's dad. <laughs> okay. Sure. Alright. I forgot what Otis's dad's name was. I named a whole stream after him dying. Was it Ben? Ben the cow, right? Then he sings the song, I won't back now. That was that was Charlie when he was fighting this thing at the beginning of the game. And the chickens were the yellow Pikmin. That's my that's my back at the barnyard uh Pikmin crossover. I hope you all liked it. You like it? Alright, let me get back fast. 
possible. Box in there too. I was scared. Back in the barnyard is like a scary movie. Oh, did, like Ben dying is like a scary scene. Like genuinely. I'm not gonna get these back on time. Probably. That fruit's gonna get back, maybe, but that, this isn't. Oh, it's not? No. They're going... Nope. <laughs> nope. And <laughs> we lost Pikmin, too. There's one just somewhere. That's great. Where is it? Where's the one stray Pikmin? Where... Oh, fuck. We're not gonna get it. Oh, no! <laughs> we won't be able to get the corpse back, bro. It's fine. The fruit will be there. It's time to visit. That's what matters most. Well, now I feel like a loser. There's actually only uh, one bull bear in the main story of this game. We, act we won't actually see that bull bear until, like, later in the game. Like, because you can't get to it yet. <laughs> New fruit, yay! Citrus slump. Dust of hustlers. We analyzed several different types of fruit. We are now able to triangulate fru fruity position. We can now use our radar to locate fruit. Alright, yeah, there we go. We find Olimar and get our key from him. Three of us will be stuck on PNF 404. More important than ever to us to find food. New fruit just dropped. This is great. We actually have a little bit of a juice buffer. If you were speedrunning this game, day five would be like, would already be like, in the a next area. Thanks to the yellow Pikmin, we will defeat the venomous boss, boss bad. I should have one surprise. We found our captain inside the beast. Wow, can you believe our luck? We got a data file from someone named Olimar. Where's our cosmic drive key? Where the world is Olimar? Where? We need that key. Do I want to do a... Uh, one more day, maybe? I feel like it's a good one-thirds point. We split the stream up to like 30 parts. Yeah, I think I'll stop for now. We'll read a few Piclopedia bios before we stop. Captain, I'm, we're so relieved to see that you're okay. Well, I have my faithful crew to thank for that, so thank you. I actually mistook that strange creature for you. You two have very similar features. Did you know that? To be honest, I'm not trapped in the belly of that vile beast. I thought of only one face, Brittany. My own. We'll never escape PNF 404 until we locate this treasure. Obsessed Olimar fellow. He's got our cosmic drive key. But don't forget why we're here. To search for fruit for our planet. For us too. Or else we'll starve. Duck. The signal coming from over there. A signal like that? Not coming from our ship or one of ours. Maybe it's Olimar. The transmitter that strong. Must be planetary explorers like us. Must be the Hokitation. If we fight Olimar, that's where we'll find our cosmic drive key. Let's track the signal to its source. Alright, uh. Let's. Look at uh, a few of these real fast. Uh, up to. This guy. Uh. What has a funny one? Oh, I don't want me to show for sure. Uh. It's actually down here. I didn't get it in my original thought though. Drift. Cool. What Charlie says about this one's pretty damn funny. Um, 
Okay, please? <laughs> that long tongue isn't a sensory organ, it's a deadly weapon. It uses that thing like a pro. I tried some exercise to see if I get my tongue to do that, but I kept buddy but by accident. Always in the same place. Ew. I hate that. Fucking buying this and use his tongue as a weapon. I love- I'm ready as a go over this one too. Not a fan of this one's style. Too plain, too beige, and too big. Where's the little version of the sky? Gotta have one, right? Maybe not after all. I don't have a little version of myself. How long is this game? Uh, it for your first try, it'll probably be decently long. But this game has a lot of replay value. This is a game you have to play a few times. Your first try will take you probably... Yeah, it's 10, 16-ish hours, but there's a ton of bonus stages to do. And you should probably replay this game at least, like, more than once. What is this a good one? What is Charlie's right this one? I forgot. I don't understand how it manages to hang in the air at the height of its jumps. But I don't understand. I just have to get out of the way. It's weird hang time helps a lot with that. Let that be a lesson. Don't stand around Gwakin's creature's weird attack moves. There's something about it. Thank you, Charlie. Oh, Bernie said something funny about this one. The polka dot motif on that translucent membrane is a striking look. Especially with the puff ball on its head. Accenting the whole ensemble. I can see a dress pattern after this creature being a big kid on Kopai. I that'd be caught dead in one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this cowardly blob holds Pikmin hostage within its own body. Its fatal mistake is not sucking up every last one of my little troops. The last survivors are that much thirstier for revenge. Top 10 Charlie bloodlust moments. That's a few more. Let's see what they say of the bosses. You should probably definitely check the bosses. The crystal over its body is one of those beautiful things I've seen on this planet. How people would stare if I could make a spacesuit out of it. They may be only staring because it'd be a translucent suit. That's nice, Brittany. I'm so proud of my crew managing to take down this beast without me. It's especially impressive because they did it without my combat training or steely fist. It's good to know I set such an example for them to live up to. It looks mean, but it's not so tough in the light. Why do you think it moves so slowly? Did it get ingested when trying to eat the captain? It's nothing that swallowed me. It may play dirty, but I respect its willingness to use any trick in the book to win. I'd accept a rematch any time. It was more comfy in the stomach than I expected. I'm glad my team pulled me out of what they did. I owe them a run of juice when I get back to Kopai. I got all of Charlie's bios, or just I could kill this thing if I wanted to. White polka dots on this is quite a look. Something about it is familiar, but where? Ah, right. As you're the captain. Not the polka dots. I mean the way it snores when it naps in the sun. Probably talking about this. That was so funny because the Pikmin 3 punch is garbage. <laughs> this red Brewster gobbles up Pikmin like candy. The standard approach is to attack it from the behind while it's still asleep. That may seem callous. I would do the same to you if it could. Stow those ceilings and strike. Alright, one more. That's a good one. I think it's a good one here. They're annoying, but I also feel a connection to these huge flying insects. Just like me, they like to bury things in the ground. Just like me, they wander off, forgetting about the seed until someone comes or else comes along to harvest it. <laughs> I could go into my strategies for taking out these things, but... Eh. Why bother? They're nuisances, not threats. Fucking buried pictures pick and activity. Really time to consider to have to tackle creatures that can do serious damage. Probably fucking calls the swooping snitch bug a fail cringe creature. Alright, uh Yeah, I'll just watch it drift now. Cool. Um Alright, uh, that's probably it this time. Um I don't know when the next one will be. I don't want to promise any exact days. Uh, probably within Tuesday to Thursday next week. 
I'll, I'll probably do one then, sir, around the same time. Maybe a bit later. Uh, maybe like an hour later, but like too much later. But um, that's it for now. Uh, thank you for coming. I know, I know, I wasn't very funny <laughs> or entertaining tonight. Probably, I'm still getting back in the the, the jig of things. But I appreciate it. Um, goodbye. Uh, I mean, happy to have a good night, everyone. <laughs>